My friends, things are getting better out here at Everstoke every single day. We have a few places to sleep if you have a van or a tent. We've got non-potable water, and if you have a filter, I think you could drink from it. We've even got a place for taking care of business. And now, thanks to Blue Eddy, the sponsor of this video, we have power and a whole lot of it. This is the Blue Eddy AC200P portable power station. First and foremost, this is just a big old battery that you can use to charge up all your various devices. This is my laptop without having to use an AC adapter, just a direct DC charge. Throw on the GoPro there, that'll charge up just fine. USB fan, yep. Electric fly swatter, why not? And you've got six AC receptacles right on the front here. Plug in my fan, we're good to go. You can charge this thing up at home with a normal wall receptacle and then take it on the road with you or charge it with solar. Or you can charge it with solar and the wall plug at the same time. So we're going to use these three Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panels to charge the portable power station. Even with laying a tarp down, everything's so dusty out here. I'm just trying to keep a little bit of dirt off the panels because they perform better the cleaner they are. So I wired all three of these panels in series. That's what Blue Eddy suggests. If you just buy one panel from Blue Eddy, that is not enough open voltage to actually get anything going. You need at least two of their panels to make it work, and they highly suggest you get three of the panels for optimal charging. And of course you can bring your own solar panels, but definitely check Blue Eddy's website and just make sure you have the right open voltage that is compatible with this system. Very easy and plug and play to get this whole thing going. I also bought an extra 30 foot of solar power wiring cable, just so we don't have to have the panels right up next to the power station. It was a very smoky and dark morning when I first plugged this in and the panels were only kicking out about 80 watts of their 600 watt potential. But as the day progressed, that number kept ticking up and up and up and I think 350 watts was the most I saw. I'm just laying these things down flat right now, but you see there's also eye bolts if you wanna hang them up on both ends and they have a little Velcro kickstand option. And of course it's really easy just to fold it all up and uh, take it on the road. This whole system is so portable. This is an incredibly exciting time for these all-in-one solar generator, power pack kits, whatever you wanna call them. Remember like five years ago when cell phones kept getting better every year and they were changing so much and it was so exciting? That's what's happening right now with these kits. Two years ago, when I built out the van with my dad, we just did it piece by piece and had to uh, watch a bunch of videos. They had these types of kits going, but they were not as good as what's happening right now. This is the solar power system I have inside my van. Two solar panels on the roof, charge controller, fuse box, uh, bus bars and circuit breakers and all kinds of whatever this thing is, <laughs> the inverter, then two big batteries in the back. They're also lithium iron phosphate, so they're awesome. But man, look at all this stuff. It's just a big mess. If I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't be able to repeat it all. I'd have to go back and read a book. And <laughs> I would just much rather buy an all-in-one unit if I had to start over again today. So up until recently, you really had to baby your batteries. You would never want to fully discharge them down to zero because that would damage them. And then every time you recharge them, you're taking a cycle off. You could only charge and discharge a battery about 500 times with the old technology. Now, with lithium iron phosphate, you can do 3,500 cycles of the battery. Fully discharge, no problem, it's not gonna break it. Fully charge, you're all good. It's a total game changer. It is really heavy though. <laughs> the battery stuff keeps getting better, and now the solar panel stuff keeps getting better and better. We're probably not gonna get hooked up to the grid. We're probably just gonna go all off grid, and this is our first step into building that system out. And we're already using a bunch of solar stuff on a smaller scale for our lighting. These LED lights are so efficient, they all have their own built-in solar panels and they can get charged up and discharged every single night and they're great. We've even got a solar street light up there. That thing is amazing, puts out a ton of power. So all those lighting systems are independent, self-sufficient. They will not be tied in to our Blue Eddy system, which is a good thing and a bad thing. If the solar street light breaks and we take it down, and we can't work on it, ugh, that's kind of 200 bucks down the drain. So hopefully all these things will stay self-sufficient and nice and in working order and not be disposable. But now that we have this, we can get a lot more imaginative 
on things that we can power out here. One of the many great uses for some power out here is to power, whoa, 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 hey, <laughs> to power up all my cordless tools. <laughs> Don't leave the battery in this one. This place is a massive construction site, so we're just draining these batteries all day, every day. So I'm still a novice when it comes to volts and watts and amps and all this stuff, but I'm learning a little bit more and more. This is currently drawing 120 watts. My dad, when he made his coffee in the morning and plugged in his Keurig, it was drawing 1400 watts. So anything when you're trying to heat stuff up like a heat gun or you're trying to boil water, that will absolutely drain this battery so fast, so quick. That kind of stuff is still better left to small propane tanks. But eventually it'd be cool to build a solar power system that can charge electric cars. So at that point, the, the coffee maker in the morning is uh, small potatoes. So these are the solar panels on top of my van. They're currently putting out 165 watts compared to 300 watts over there. That's a little bit bigger footprint than this. And these are a little dirty, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. And we can see, I'll clean them. Oh yeah, they were pretty dirty. So cleaning the panel gave me one more amp at 33 volts, which gives me about 33 more watts. That's pretty cool. Those panels are super easy to pack up and move around. And I think eventually we're gonna put them over the top of the shred quarters here because this is just a nice, perfect spot with sun aplenty. We just have to drill some holes to actually <laughs> go through the top of this thing, which is never fun. Or maybe we don't drill holes and we just run the cables around right here and build a little weatherproof box for it to live in. You can charge your phone on top of this thing. Uh, I'm recording this with my phone right now, so I can't really show you that it works, but it does. So it's pulling in over 300 watts consistently, so the fan kicked on and it's making a little more noise now, but nothing compared to a noisy gas generator. I'm sure at this point you're asking, how much stuff can I power and how long can I power it all? And of course, the answer to that is it depends. You can have 2,000 watts worth of stuff plugged in and drawing power from the power bank, but at that max output, you're gonna drain the battery within an hour, unless you have the max input of 700 watts of solar going. Then it's gonna take a little bit longer to run dry. I think the best way to figure out if this AC200P can handle what you wanna throw at it is to buy one of these little kilowatt devices. You plug this into the wall and then you plug in your circular saw or your refrigerator and you can actually see how many watts that device is using at any given time. And from there, you just gotta do the math and take into account a little bit of solar variability. It was a smoky day this first day, it was a clear day the next day, so there was more power the next day than the first day. Eventually, I think we'll get a hand truck for this bad boy, but for now, this will be nice and portable. Our water jugs are looking a little light, so let's pump some water here. Oh, I guess I shouldn't get so close with this. <laughs> So eventually we're gonna be able to get into our well, pump water out of that. But for now, for demonstration purposes, let's get the submersible pump in here, put her in the old blue jug. Make sure AC output is turned on. And once we plug this thing in, it's off to the races. <laughs> that feels so good. Okay, now I gotta go unplug it. Oh, that's heavy. I should have another wheelbarrow. <laughs> the power station's in it. And this is about six gallons. Whoa. So that's a pretty easy way to get a day's worth of water like that. Electricity, imagine that. The era of the noisy, nasty gas generator to help out in a pinch when you lose power is coming to an end. These units are so much better, so much cleaner. Solar plus a battery, it is a game changer. And Blue Eddy is coming out with bigger and badder systems every day. You've gotta to go to their website, check out this one, the AC200 Pro, but oh my goodness, there's stuff coming out almost every month from this company, and eventually we're gonna use it all probably out here.
It's just so awesome that we could spend a few thousand dollars instead of tens of thousands of dollars to get electricity out here and to get a lot of things powered up before we go whole hog and harness all the sunlight that's out here instead of worrying about those dang fossil fuels. So stick around, we've got a lot to do, a lot more projects around here at Everstoke. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.